Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Always do appreciate it. And welcome back to Planet Zoo. We are continuing our look at the Amazon DLC for Planet Zoo. Big shout out to Frontier for giving me access to said DLC so I can make these videos for you in a timely fashion. And you'll notice uh, it's empty. Well, what we're going to do today is today we're going to look at the capuchin, the Colombian white-faced capuchin monkey, and we're going to make a habitat from scratch in this tropical biome. Currently it is blank, but by the end we'll have ourselves a nice little habitat, and we are actually going to be making an indoor habitat today. We'll see how that works. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Let's jump forward in time and see what's going on. Stay right there. <laughs> now, before you all click away, <laughs> this is my concept. Uh, this is my proof of concept map, we'll say. Uh, ignore the giant brick wall. Ignore the caterwampus unbalanced, unsupported climbing structures. This was my idea, and I wanted to see if it could even work, if it was plausible, let alone <clears throat> what it would look like when we were done. So what I've got here is an idea, a kernel, and this is my capuchin idea, where it's going to be a, hor a, a vertical habitat rather than a horizontal. One of the big issues in Planet Zoo is that ar arboreal animals like monkeys and orangutans and lemurs and other animals that love to climb, they don't spend nearly enough time in the climbing structures. Climbing is simply a means to an end in this game rather than a state of being. Like, you have to have a climbing mechanism for animals that climb, but it's simply something that they have to interact with um, but it's not something they prefer necessarily. Um, and so a lot of us that have been playing Planet Zoo have been doing some testing and stuff. And one of the things some people, I know Mike Sheets has talked about it. Um, when it comes to climbing, the way climbing works best, if you want to get your animals to climb, you need to actually build areas of nav navigable habitat and then make climbing structures that connect them. So that basically the only way they can get there is through climbing. And so that's what we did here. We built four little platforms in an effort and we put climbing structures to connect them. And sure enough, it worked. And what I did, you can see I have food on one and I have different enrichments on others and bedding on another. Food was over here and I put this here so that the uh, keepers could get there. So it was to see, would they use it? Would they interact? And they do, they do. Um, unfortunately, I've gotten rid of the monkeys. I put them all in the trade center. Uh, so you don't see them in this part, but don't worry, once we start making the video for real, they will be in there and you can get a look at them. So uh, yeah, so this is kind of the idea we're going to do. A couple things, this is way too big. Uh, it is still too horizontal. I want it to be very small, as small as I can make it, reasonably. And the pond here is nice for an outdoor exhibit, but since we're going to have an indoor exhibit, I don't think we're going to have this moat. They won't need that because they'll basically be behind glass indoors. So this was just to see, can I do what I want to do? And the answer is yes, I can. So now let's go ahead and actually start building the exhibit that I have in my head with our next uh, update. So you can see here, this is sort of a similar idea to what we had going on, but hopefully you notice it is a lot more condensed. We do still have the kind of pit here, but my thought was that the animals could even go below where the guests will see. Uh, but you can also notice how tall <laughs> this is. And what I had to do was I actually had to dig out a lot of the terrain here to get this to work. So we're going to have to suspend belief since this is just going to be one exhibit in a zoo uh, to, to feel like this feels real. But the goal here is that all of this is going to be indoors, including the part where you actually look. My thought is we're going to have some glass here. And uh, we're going to have like, probably we're going to put a waterfall in here. We're going to decorate it with lots of foliage and rocks. But we got our first bit of climbing, you can see. So the only way to get to this platform here is to take this little climbing path. So, and what's really cool is when you know how animals, if they go somewhere they're not supposed to or they get stuck, they get boxed. 
and they end up getting shipped back to the start, the opening of the habitat. And so whenever an animal gets boxed, which happens all the time, they unbox here and then they'll all have to run down this way to explore the rest of the habitat. So um, yeah, you can see just starting to kind of get an idea. My terraforming is kind of eh, it's really kind of rough right now. Um, but hopefully you can see so far not that much just terraforming and what I'm doing when I'm terraforming is I'm using usually a pretty high intensity brush at a low uh, scale so like a, a, a 80 or 90 percent at like a three and I'm doing a lot of uh, I'm doing a lot of flatten the foundation that's way too big <laughs> so a three is still pretty big so i'll do like a two and i get my platform and then i kind of carve it out and make it look decent and so we're gonna have to get access down here i kind of want a platform over here i think i want something over here so this is going to evolve as we progress but this is the start now of what we're actually going to have we do have a couple hard edges here with the voxel terrain um, but that's just kind of how it's gonna be so we could smooth it and when you smooth it You get rid of those lines But then what happens is it makes it actually easier for the animals to move around and I really want to make it difficult for them to get from area to area without using climbing equipment the whole goal here is to get them to use the climbing equipment as much as possible So let's have another jump and see where we're at all right, so you can see quite a change here, quite an uh, quite a jump ahead of time, but you can see we have some capuchins in there. We don't have maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we get a couple more. You need, I think, eight at minimum for them to be happy socially. Again, welfare is all turned off and everything. And actually, if we're going to be completely honest, this habitat is technically too small for them. Like this is insane. This is so big for them. I couldn't imagine them needing more space than this, especially because they're arboreal animals. So as long as you give them plenty to climb on, they should be just fine. Um, but you can see how they do use this climbing stuff quite regularly. It's really cool. They run down here and they hop into the bedding area and they all, obviously they all like to sleep there, which is gonna be really nice for guests because as they walk by, they'll be able to see them sleeping. And they like to hop, they like to dance around on this a lot. Uh, they, they, they pretty much use most of the climbing areas. Now, if you're curious as to why this is here, uh, because of the rocks that I put in here, they could not get to this water source and then they were all getting real thirsty. And so I had to go ahead and make it, make an area for them to get to uh, so that they could climb over here. But it's just another excuse for them to climb. So that's pretty good. So uh, let's get a close up look so you can actually see what these little guys look like. So let's see here. There they are. They are adorbs little guys. They are super loud though. Oh my goodness. They make a ton of noise. They can go take a nap. Oh, no, 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 little capuchin. You're so widow. So yeah, they make a ton of noise. They yell and they scream. They run all over the place. But it's actually really cool. And what I really like is how high up that keeper is. The problem we have is that the keeper can't access any of these areas. So when they poo down here, it's kind of, you're kind of stuck with it. But uh, I actually haven't had any trouble with it thus far. So that's pretty okay. Pretty cool with that. Um, this is kind of death defying for the poor guy, so we'll have to put some ropes in here for him. Um, and you'll notice I kind of started I having an idea of what's going to happen up here. Like we're going to have, you know, false walls because this is an indoor exhibit. So we're going to have to enclose all of this. And that's going to be kind of interesting because it is from this area. It is so very, very tall. It's like three stories tall. It's massive. But from this area here, it's not nearly, I mean, it's big, but it's not nearly as tall. And you'll see I had to do some really funky things with the habitat walls here uh, just to get it because it's such a big jump in terrain. It, the, it didn't want to play nice, but we'll make all those invisible anyway. We'll use null barriers. It won't really make a difference. Uh, this, uh, this water feature here, which actually I should probably tweak a little bit, is actually not a waterfall at all. It's one of the fountains. If I pull it up, I want to show you because it was a kind of a neat little thing here. Um, if I go to special effects, and I believe it's obviously underwater, water jet large. If I let that roll, look at that. So it gives this nice cascade effect, and you can't even see 
the fountain. So it just looks like it's pouring. And so I nested a couple of them to get that look the way I wanted. And so you can see you just kind of zoop. That might be too much. Yes, yes, it's too tall. Bring it back down, bring it back down, bring it back down. So there you go. We got some little waterfall action going on there. Probably should put something there to make it look like there's a pond here that's pouring the water over, or at the very least, some water spigots that's pouring the water out. But see, they love this vine. And it's so, so neat to see them running along the vines. So here's some new mosses from the update. There's a couple of new trees. This is one of the new trees from the update. Uh, there's a couple new flower species from uh, in here, or if they aren't yet, there will be. So trying to, in this habitat, incorporate a lot more um, of the DLC items compared to, say, the llama farm that we built. If you haven't watched that, you should go check out the llama farm. You can see what I did with those animals. That was much different, and I didn't use much of the DLC uh, at all. Or I did, but it didn't look like it. <laughs> anyway, let's keep moving. Let's move ahead. We've got to do a lot more foliage. And then the big task is figuring out how to make this look good for peeps as well as the monkeys. So let's uh, move onward. So we have the back walls of the enclosure in. They are not gonna stay this color, don't worry. We're gonna make them kind of a go away green color. You can see all my little monkeys running away. I am having an issue though. I am having an issue with them drinking. They currently in this build are not drinking water, uh, even when they're dehydrated and thirsty. And at first I thought it was because they couldn't reach over here. But when I click on one of them, if I, if I can grab one, frick. If I, if I can grab one and show you, you will see that, no, they can totally access this area just fine. They just don't want any. So um, we, we, I throw in a water fountain for them, and that helps a lot uh, in a little bit. But even with that, they still get thirsty quite a bit. So a little bit more foliage coming in here, still kind of raw but I wanted to show you a bit of how we're gonna be doing here. You're gonna enter the exhibit. There'll be a door here and then there will be a door over here. And the main viewing area, I think it's gonna kind of be, gonna kind of be this area here. This, this little pop out here because you get really good views of them climbing all over. See, there he goes climbing up there. Actually, these are all girls, there she goes. These are all females, I don't have any males in here yet. So I have yet to see them play with this item. And to be fair, I have yet to see any animal play with this item. So with the, the mirrored mobile, reflective mobile or whatever it is. Uh, so I don't know if that's just, if they just don't. <laughs> they will play the keyboard though, and that's really fun to hear. So uh, hopefully you're starting to kind of sense how it's going. Uh, let's jump ahead now because now we're getting into more of the uh, details about how to make this look like an interior exhibit. So clearly we have lots to talk about here. Another big jump, but there's really nothing too fancy with what's going on here. Uh, the ceiling is all um, the plaster pieces and the wall or the glass pieces. These are old glass pieces. These are not the new glass pieces that come in the free update. I will be using those later on in the build. But now I think I, I, I think this feels so much better now that the walls are in because it, it really does feel like a realistic exhibit. Uh, it's very lush, but I, I don't think that's a problem because these monkeys are pretty small. I don't think they're gonna do too much damage as long as they're not anything they're gonna forage from. You can see the fake rock work hugging the walls here on either side, trying to make that wall, the go away green, kind of disappear. But I think with all the stuff there is to see in here, I think it really does a pretty good job. We put the rope, um, the rope, fence up here for the keeper so he can easily get there and drop the seeds in um they fill up you know all the feeding options are right here to make it easy for the keeper <laughs> and all the fun stuff is down here i did add a door here it is a false door it doesn't actually serve any purpose but my thought was there would be more than one entrance to this exhibit uh there would be a main floor and then an upper area and that's how they would get in here and clean you know they would need to do deep cleans throughout the year <clears throat> i was watching an episode of the aquarium show all about the Georgia Aquarium and the episode I just watched, they had to put the penguins off exhibit for like two weeks while they deep cleaned the exhibit. So I'm sure that would be something that happens probably once a year. They, they move the monkeys off exhibit, clean up real good, and then put them back. So 
Uh, you'll notice the interior got some love as well. Uh, this is one of the, this is the new door. I recolored it to give it a nice, like, red, uh, red, red wood color. I love it. I love the little textures. I love the designs on it. Really nice door. Uh, using some logs here and using some of the thicker bamboo colored brown to kind of make a nice little look here to give some more detail. You'll notice this is a Q path. This is not one of the normal path uh, textures. This is a Q path, but I am going to change it out to an actual path that people can walk on because otherwise you can't put benches and stuff down. So it's just something to try. Uh, I did go ahead and throw in two exhibits. Uh, we have the new the new Amazon tree frog. Uh, where is it? There's two of them in here, and you can never find them. Oh, there's one. Look, there's one right there. Whoop. Ah! What is going on? There. Good enough. There's one of them. And over here we have a Brazilian pink lady tarantula or something. And I have yet to see it in here. I'm not even sure it's in here. <laughs> I don't believe it's actually in here. Oh, is that it down there? Oh, snap. There it is. Look at that. I bumped my mic. I was so excited about the mic. I've never seen this before. Whoop, look at that. Ooh, it's so gross. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, there you go. There's two of those in here somewhere. It's cool. So uh, these are some of the temple pieces that come with uh, some of the temple pieces that come with the DLC. Try to incorporate those exhibits in a nice way. Uh, if you've been following Bro Coaster Season Zoo, I did something like this in the Lemur House, but I tried to make it look more natural. I like this kind of dilapidated temple look, and then you look across and you see the monkeys in their natural environment, still jumping all over the place, still climbing all over the place. Got another door over here. We need to dress up the walls quite a bit. They're still pretty bland. Put some um, educational information up there. Swap out the paths so that we can get some uh, signage in here and some seating area. I did have to put some backstage stuff here. Um, and so we have that. Staff can easily access these exhibits. We have a trade center down here just because I didn't feel like connecting this all up. But you can see this is pretty large. And in real life, there would be a bunch of little animals you would get to. Uh, maybe this is a small primate house. And this exhibit is still huge for the animal. I, should, I could probably make it even smaller. Um, but I didn't want to go too much. I didn't want the game to yell at me too terribly much. <laughs> well, but you can see we're starting to close it off here. You can see where the roof line is going to go. So what's going to be really cool is when you look up here, you're going to have a hard time seeing like the whole thing, which is kind of what I wanted. I wanted it to feel like this exhibit goes in both directions for, for quite a while. So anyway, we are nearing the end. There's still some more details to do and the interior before we box it all in. So let's push ahead and see what's next. So if you're ever concerned as you're building that it looks like a hot mess, <laughs> uh, look at this, cause this is a hot flipping mess. And it's a lot of trial and error normally, at least for me, it's usually a lot of trial and error. And you gotta worry about what you're gonna see, whether you are exploring a habitat or whether you're looking at it from the outside. There is so much like behind the curtain ugly in these games like you're not gonna see any of this by the time we're done and this ugly roof line here it doesn't matter it's all gonna be covered up and so just keep plugging along if you're working and you're like i don't know about this keep going until you feel like you've reached the point where you can do where it's it'll, it'll it'll make sense if you keep pushing and keep trying it'll make sense so you can see here we've added more details on our interior we're using some of the nice new signage and some nice new gold pieces i love the shine on these gold pieces uh like i said frontier man if you haven't watched my breakdown of the dlc frontier it nails their scenery and their sound design all the time that's never a question love the new artwork that comes with this dlc absolutely uh, you can see we use some of these lamps, I think, from the India set. And when I set it to nighttime, I like the way it glues. So we get some nice glowing going on here. This is all illuminated real nice. Really pleased with how this is all looking. And uh, <clears throat> you can see as well that we have this whole area enclosed now. Um, 
Except it's a little dark. Oh, there's a box on a vine. <laughs> Fun box. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a there's a significant lack of natural light. I think we can do better. So we're gonna put some more windows in here and we're gonna open this wall up and use some of the brand new glass that came with the free update. Cause that's a really cool feature to have to let some more natural light in because the lighting engine in this game is so good. It, it, it'd be criminal to not take advantage of the lighting. And uh, once we do, and, and this exhibit is bathed in sunlight a lot more, it really helps you actually see the animals better from, from behind the glass. Cause right now it's a little hard to see. There's some glare. And that's never going to go all the way, complete, go completely away, but we can mitigate it by putting some more sunlight in the exhibit. And so that's where we're headed next. We're gonna we're gonna increase the sun, the sun, the uh, what are they called? Darn it, skylights. There we go. And we're gonna start blocking out the exterior. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a giant. It's gonna be a giant block. Like there's really not gonna be anything fancy to it. These. A lot of times these kinds of exhibits from my research are very utilitarian they don't they aren't meant to impress you on the outside they're meant to work really well on the inside and so ours will not be the fanciest exterior ever this is not one of those historic buildings like the lion house that i built for season zoo this is a utilitarian building where what's going on inside matters far more so let's keep pressing along and i think we're almost done so here it is. Here's the entire exterior from the top of the hill. Um, <laughs> this is incredible. This blew me away when I got to the, I wasn't quite sure it was going to look like this. Uh, like, honestly, if this was for my zoo, I'd have a lot of signage and all kinds of stuff. I cared more about the actual exhibit, and this is really rough and ready, bare bones, don't judge me too hard. It's about the, 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 the monkey and the exhibit, not so much the building that they're in for this episode. But check this out. Like, it blows my mind. There's like a three-story building hiding here. It's pretty neat. This reminds me a lot of the Omaha Zoo. Um, it's built on a hill, and there are a lot of exhibits like this where you enter, and like the orangutans, I believe, are built like into the hill, and you can take an elevator down, and it's it's incredible. And this is this gives me the same kind of vibes. So as I walk around, you'll see it's a very simple building. It's all either these breezeway br brick breezeway walls, or it's the uh, non-gridded plaster walls and it's art-shaped roofs. I could, again, if this were for a project, like for my for Emerald Gardens or Season Zoo, I would deck out the top with a bunch of HVAC stuff. Uh, that's just uh, not something I'm gonna do in this episode. I'm aware that it's looking really bland, but I really like the shape of it. it it's so boxy and utilitarian. And, I believe Jaunty in his new zoo series talks a lot about brutalism. I don't think this is brutalism, but <laughs> I don't think it's all that far away either. Uh, not much has changed on the interior, if anything. We're still the same on the inside. Still need to do those skylights. And so I just wanted to show you this is what it's like once you cover everything up. You wouldn't know that it was that hot mess that we just looked at. It, it doesn't look too terribly bad. So let's do our final update and I will show you the finished product. Welcome to the Capuchin exhibit. We have it open to the public. I have swapped out the paths, put in these crazy mosaic paths, which I really like and I have don't think I've used it yet. Finally found a place to use it. We decorated, we put some info boards up, we have some info boards here for the tarantulas and for the frog, the Amazon uh, red-eyed tree frog. He's still sitting on the log there. Actually, she. <laughs> love the little, again, I love the artwork. But now, hopefully you see, oh wow, it's much brighter in there. It is much brighter in there. Um, and the reason it's much brighter in there, if we go in, ugh, as you can see, I have really lit it up. I have gone ahead and really increased the number of windows, and I think it's a huge improvement. I think it feels so much brighter, so much more alive, so much 
better and hopefully you agree with me and if you look over here these are those new glass pieces i think it's a half meter high by one meter wide uh, long so it's a they, they come in all different sizes and they are also awesome at letting in the natural light so i'm actually going to get out of tejid cam uh, because i thought it would be fun but it's actually more it's actually less uh, intuitive for me so let's go ahead and just kind of take a zoom around here get some up close vibes so you can see here <laughs> it's pretty tall I'm, it's pretty far up there like this is a pretty large i didn't do anything to the waterfall don't yell at me uh, it's a pretty large pretty tall exhibit uh oh someone just got boxed someone just got, look at how cute oh got boxed again oh two of them did hi they get boxed all the time i don't know why but they can climb all over look they run on the ropes they run over here to get their food they end up all over the place and I love it. You can see the peeps walking through. Really, really happy with this one. Uh, and, and I was able to build this in just a little over a day. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty chuffed, pretty pleased. So if we come out here, didn't do much to the exterior. I don't think I did anything to the exterior. Added some doors where the people were actually going to be walking in. Oh, we have a hole here. Uh-oh. Look at this. Let's fix this. Let, let's let's fix that there there we go we fixed that that was that was difficult wasn't it that was, that was just really hard <laughs> yeah really 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 happy with it i could even put more skylights in if i really wanted i could put another one in line here although then we're kind of getting close to this rock wall i think that might have been why i didn't do that so yeah but this is my indoor capuchin exhibit and i hope you enjoy it i hope you like it as much as i do and if you did like it be sure to hit the like button and if you are new to the channel or if you just haven't yet you've been on the fence consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the planet zoo or planet coaster or other game content on the channel with all that being said have yourself a great day great night great whatever and i will see all of you for the next episode of planet zoo take care everyone and i'll talk to you later bye, -bye.